Perusia. This is Archangel. Unicorn hunting in foreign lands. Ooh, sounds exotic. Exciting. You know, an analogy comes to mind. I was talking one day with a couple people about food. Eventually, the conversation yielded a guy stating that he has a tomato allergy. So, one of the other guys says, Man, that sucks. I love tomatoes. So, I jump in and offer. I don't like actual tomatoes, but I like tomato products. Soups, juices, condiments, etc. I can't even have those. Nothing tomato, laments the allergy sufferer. Then the second guy's eyes light up and he asks, what about tomato soup? Nope. Well, what about V8 juice, he continues. No, I have a tomato allergy. Anything tomato is bad. Not even ketchup, the second guy retorts. No tomato products, no ketchup, no juice, no Bloody Marys, no tomato flavored cookies or pancakes or gum. What part of allergy is confusing you? Then the other guy, just to stir the pot, says, not even salsa? By this time, we were all laughing. It tickles me when males talk about foreign females like they are the exception to the male devaluation allergy. I am allergic to being used for utility than discarded. Females are toxic. Hmm, a female allergy, huh? Does that include Russians and Latinos? Hey, what about Asians? All this foreign female chatter amuses me. It is simply another diversion tactic stalling the truth so that guys can go on a wild goose chase into fantasy land of unicorns. Not all females maliciously use males. Some must be different. It is a retreat to a place where fairy tales still exist and a select hidden few females are benevolent and devoid of gynocentrism and hypergamy. The same gynocentrism and hypergamy the entire rest of the human female sex exhibits. When someone concedes and agrees with my observations of male devaluation and disposability, yet takes refuge in unicorn mythology, whether foreign nationals or of a particular religion, this tells me they don't quite grasp what is going on. This amuses me, much like the tomato conversation, because I can see that these guys just aren't getting it. Females are toxic to male welfare by nature. They use and manipulate provision and protection from males. It's part and parcel of their instinct for survival. But males so desperately want to believe in the fairy tales of romance, female altruism, and benevolence to the point where they begin the unicorn bargaining phase of female nature denial. Okay, well, maybe American women are toxic, but what about Russian women? Why, yes, they are programmed with hypergamy. Well, uh, what about Latino women? Yes, they also are opportunistic. Well, hey, what about Indonesian or Thai females? Yes, this includes Scandinavian ladies, South Pole chicks, Atlantean females that wear purple hats and berate Smurfs. Is she female? Are you male? Then they will use you for protection and provision at every possible opportunity, whether or not they even consciously realize that they use males for utility. Yes, this includes V8 and ketchup and salsa. What are you not understanding here, fellas? Is she female? Then she is wired for hypergamy and in-gender preference. Is she human? Then she is driven by survivalist instincts. Put the two together, and she has no room for compassion or altruistic male care. I do not fault females for using any means necessary to survive. It's our biological imperative. I am simply stating this as fact. If you have an aversion to being used for labor, then thrown away, then you have a female allergy, which necessarily includes all females. Sorry, Charlie. The only difference between the misandristic homegrown females and the foreign ladies is that the foreign females are still somewhat covert about their male usury. They are still in character as appreciative, delicate flower petals. 
and the affection-starved Western males eat this performance up, subsequently rushing into the hungry claws of women of other nationalities or religions, where the females at least hide their male usury, and thus males think that they have discovered a secret cache of fabled unicorns. Wow, they really do exist. Yeah, except that they don't. You have not found an anomaly. You have found a vulture who flatters as they peck at your 60 hour a week corpse. You have found a leech who slowly usurps your vitality rather than a gun-toting man-hater who demands your blood with a bullhorn. Same product, different packaging. Gentlemen, this is a rough pill, but you must understand your labor and protection is the only reason any female anywhere even gives you the time of day. Sorry, but females are female, and females on some level loathe males. They loathe their genius, their creativity, their physical strength, their independence, their skills, their talents, their abilities, their genitalia, everything. Foreign females simply put on a better show of appreciation for the protection and provision males provide. And they do this in order to keep males fooled and compliant into providing and producing more. At least Western women wear their misandry on their sleeves. You can see the hazards they are before they overtake you. Foreign women are much more cunning. They would smile in your face and gaze into your eyes, then whisper flatteries into your ear and put tasty sandwiches in your lunchbox and send you off to bleed yourself dry providing for her, making her life comfortable, sparing her the unpleasantries of a life of manual labor or toil or responsibility for her actions. I have known many a foreign female, and they are every bit the utility usurpers that Western women are. Russian, Asian, Latino, I have known and talked with many guys who have married foreign females from each of these countries, where it is fabled that benevolent male-caring women flow like vintage wines. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that they are indeed female like every other. They are preoccupied with the usurpation of protection and provision from males. Now, to give some women the benefit of the doubt, many females may not understand their aversion to males or even consciously realize that they use the male sex. Yet, this does not negate the fact that they do. It is female nature. When faced with stress, and life is stress, females automatically revert to default mode, which is survival. And whether females realize their behaviors or not, gynocentrism, hypergamy, protection and provision, usurpation from males, all are de facto female survival strategies. Yes, males also have this survival instinct, yet males have, through gynocentric brainwashing and epidemic devaluation, they have twisted their survival protocol to align with the pursuit of female approval even at the cost of personal injury or death. Males do not manipulate females for protection and provision. They cater to females and coddle them to receive female affection. And female affection and approval is something males deem necessary to their personal survival. Thus, females use males for everything and males allow this willingly so they may get a pat on the head and a good boy tossed their way once in a while. Oh, absolutely, this is how both sexes can be gynocentric with the undeniable instincts of survival driving these pro-female, anti-male behaviors on a subconscious level. Females use males for survival. Males willingly allow the usury because they need the female validation for their survival. This is how powerful male subjugation to females is. Females need to use males for their survival. Males need female validation for theirs. So both sexes are gynocentric and concerned with female welfare above all else. We are a gynocentric species by virtue of our survivalist instincts. And survival is a greater motivator even than eating or sleeping, period. 
Moreover, foreign women prove hypergamy by seeking Western men. They seek advancement in life, and America is the supposed land of riches and luxury. So females peddle themselves on these foreign bride websites because they absolutely want to upgrade from some little slum in Colombia or a little frozen town in Siberia. They will give all kinds of plausible excuses why they search for Western men. Oh, the crime, the poverty, hazards of all kind which surround them in their home country. All of this will pull at the heartstrings of Western men who will don their armor and ride to the rescue. Or these foreign women will paint the ambient males of their country as drunks or chauvinistic abusers, which again compels males with the urge to swoop in, sword of righteousness drawn to save the fair maiden, forced to scrub the floor for her wicked stepmother and jealous sisters. Furthermore, the native males are all delinquent drunks explanation proves hypergamy in its very structure. These females are not satisfied with the alcoholic males. They want a better provider who doesn't distract his misery with spirits, but rather a coherent male that can spend all his time focused on her whims, not the bottle. What, are there no good, honest, pure-hearted foreign boys willing to eke out a living sweeping sidewalks to support these oppressed foreign females? Oh, there are, but females want more, better. Just think about it. Why would a female solicit to uproot herself from her home, her family, her people, and pride, then move around the globe? For what? Love? <laughs> Silly wabbit. Naivete looks so cute on you. Hypergamy is actually females exhibiting their Jefferson programming. They would not be satisfied with a loving sidewalk sweeper with a heart of gold, making that country's minimum wage for the rest of his life. No, 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 no. Upgrading is the female intention. If such prospects did not entail the promise of a better life, more luxury and provision, then females would not be talking love and romance online to rich, lonely Western men suffering from the fallout of abuse by Western women. I have seen this scenario unfold time and again. Females talk love and sweet romance, blah, blah, yada, yada, etc. Then they get here, they acclimate, and then boom, out of left field, some drama arises. Then separation and divorce. Then it's off to the next sucker. But hey, thanks for the green card, dude. Oh yes, I fell for and buried my hopes in the Russian unicorn for quite a while, even seeing a few. I now realize that my Russian fantasy was simply a stalling tactic, because one particular purple pill male, me, did not want to concede reality of females. Not just certain females, human females. I can tell you the hypergamous acclimation period of foreign females is quite fast. You see, females are cunningly smart and opportunistic. Put these two together and voila, male manipulation. So these foreign females are introduced to a new environment surrounded by convenience and technology and luxury that they may not have known before. And suddenly their head is spinning with possibilities and opportunities that do not include monogamous commitment to you with your pathetic tender feelings and romantic heart. This has been confirmed to me by nearly every male I have been able to quiz about their mystical foreign unicorn. You bet, it's so amazing in the beginning, then drama forms, and she's off to the next meal ticket in her new home of Liberty, Hollywood, and Starbucks inside grocery stores. Moreover, I have read the stories of too many males duped by foreign females, and my assertion of female nature has been upheld by males that have fallen for this dog and pony show. Hey, a female searching for a better life is great, more power to her. Absolutely, pursue what you want and settle for nothing less than what you aspire to. I am not demeaning females searching for more or better. I am simply stating that hypergamy is reality. Love, romance, soulmates, these are not. Unicorns are still mythology, regardless of country or theology, like conservative religion. <laughs> yeah. 
like any courtship. It's all sweetness and manners and fine china in the beginning. Then familiarity, bad breath, and dishes in the sink causes the oxytocin to start running dry, and the veneer of this love high is replaced by the monotony of life bills and improperly squeezed toothpaste tubes. And suddenly, her hypergamous, gynocentric nature comes screaming to the surface. Or, if a female gets lucky and finds a particularly rich man to ferry them away from China or Brazil or St. Petersburg, they will put up with the monotony by attaching themselves to his wallet and settling down for the long haul of monetary usurpation. No, not all foreign women jump from man to man like a schizophrenic game of hypergamy frogger as soon as they get here. Some do exactly what traditional women do. They bed down and prepare to live off your blood and vitality for life or your death, whichever comes first. Little bits of truth are beginning to shine through, and I think the Russian bride bubble has popped. There have been so many scams revealed, and men can see them for what they are. They are female, and if they are hot, they most likely are trying to scam you, like all the rest of the hot women around the world. Gentlemen, understand that one, if they are female, they want your utility and protection, period. And two, if they are stunningly attractive and female, they are the worst of the worst usurpers of male utility. You seriously think that a statuesque 25-year-old Ukrainian female is looking for love from a soft, deteriorating, yet rich, 60-year-old American entrepreneur? <laughs> yeah. Foreign women love Western men because of the wealth and technology of these rich countries. Because of the stories of gold flowing through these streets in America, where everybody wears the finest satin and nobody goes hungry or homeless. Well, unless you're male, and especially a male who has served your country, then you can go homeless and hungry at the drop of a hat. Moreover, foreign females like Western males because we have been trained we are compliant doormats who still believe in love and romance and unicorns and will do anything for females. Western men are already trained to worship females. Western males are the weakest, most pathetic simps out there. So hot foreign females see that Western men are ripe for the plucking and they swoop in to take advantage of the kind-hearted blue and purple pill males. Ironically, foreign females prey on the most abused and broken-hearted males. Hot American guys are already up to their eyeballs in coddling and pampering hot American females. They don't need any more. Foreign females are even arrogant to the point that I have heard foreign females actually critique Western females unfavorably, not because of how they abuse males, but rather because they break their cover to do it. Foreign females could not enjoy the smorgasbord of broken-hearted males that they do unless Western women had treated males malevolently to the point where these males started looking elsewhere around the globe for their fabled unicorn. These foreign females will say, y'all Western women, you screwed up your own meal ticket. You get much more out of males by being sweet rather than sour. And foreign females still act sweet and appreciative of the protection and provision and utility they usurp from males. You see, to the detriment of awakening males, the confluence of technology that enable global communication also ushered in global dating as well. This further enables fantasy by keeping males chained to the unicorn yarn because now the world was a click away and now he might find that one amazing, unconditionally loving, altruistic, statuesque, special soulmate. No, foreign females love the cruelty Western women heap on to Western men. They simply critique their strategy. Where they say that American females went wrong is to let men see the male devaluing cards they are holding. Hence the foreign angels of salvation sweep in with their mouths shut, playing the sweet, delicate sandwich-making flower petal, and scoop up the broken-hearted males who will do even more for this foreign goddess who plucked them from loneliness and bestowed affection upon them. 
I have heard foreign females arrogantly concede their strategy. They play the benevolent, tender Rapunzel and keep their hypergamy and gynocentrism and misandry hidden. Then they are as good as gold. Play the traditional infantilized female. Then these remora attach themselves to the whale's tender underbelly. And because of feminism, this has been largely successful to the degree where I hear Eastern females mock Western women for revealing their hand. Because unlike foreign women who wear their misandry on the inside, Western women wear their misandry tattooed across their forehead. Then again, I don't know why any foreign female would complain about this. It's because of Western females' abuse that foreign females even have a lucrative market to exploit. Maybe foreign females should be thanking Western females and sending them appreciation cards. I am sorry to break it to you fellas, but this is a red pill that needs to go down. There is no secret cache of mystical unicorns. Rare exceptions? Possibly. A secret cache? No. You need to come to terms with this. I had to, and that was the final stalling tactic of my purple pill existence. It's not just foreign females that males hail in hopes of extracting a divinely ordained goddess, but also males revert to seeking secret stashes of benevolent angels in certain veins of thought or certain ideologies. This is still a stalling tactic detrimental to male well-being. Females are female. You have to accept this. No mommy is coming to rescue you. No female anywhere in the world is going to heal your wounds of devaluation nor reverse your disposability in the eyes of the world. I'm telling you, I have been there panicking, desperate to find the exception, the unicorn, somewhere in this hostile colorless world. Believe you me, I have run the gamut of female subgroups in order to keep my unicorn dream on life support as I searched in vain for the Easter Bunny. Maybe foreign females are different. They would appreciate my hard work because they are used to less and they appreciate the small things. Maybe farm girls are different. They know hard work and appreciate it. Hey, maybe country girls have a unicorn among them. They are conservative and they like songs about love. Maybe fitness or weightlifting chicks. Maybe goth or emo or tatted up bad girls. Or maybe conservative religious females. Surely they are different because most will propose and worship God as a male deity, right? Oh, I know, Republican girls, tomboys, nerdy, or gamer chicks. I, I, I mean, come on, anyone? Females are female, and a female's priority is survival. Now let's think, how do they accomplish this? By leeching protection and provision from males. Likes, beliefs, ethnicities, favorite music, everything else is just details. Gynocentrism is the only underlying constant of all humanity. Oh, it's rough, I know. But all this traditionalism talk or foreign female searches are simply stalling tactics by males who do not want to swallow that last bitter red pill regarding human female programming. Males do not want to believe the realities of gynocentrism or hypergamy. It is a refusal by males to see females for what they are, utility usurpers that do not care about male suffering in the slightest, unless it begins to affect his providing of protection and provision, in which case they may prop up their drone until he is back to full production mode, or she simply chucks him and finds another shovel. Females do not care about males or their feelings, and they despise male weakness. Females desire leisure at the expense of your blood, sweat, and tears. <sighs> this is rough, I know, and many a male have tried to eke out a comfortable living in Purple Pillville. But really, comfort is a relative term. How comfortable can you be really with a tapeworm feeding off you? In all actuality, there is no purple pill existence. You are either blue pill and disposable to the vaginasty, or you are red pill and you starve the vaginasty of your expendability. There is no middle ground. You're a shovel or you are a liberated male. You either feed female privilege or you threaten it. 
purple pillars are shovels who feed themselves fantasy. They recognize the misandry of society. They see the male devaluation which surrounds all of us. But they are still having some trouble dealing with their utter aloneness, and so they bury this misery in unicorn fantasies. They desire some semblance of justice, some redress of misandry, some acknowledgement of male abuses. Yet, they are still too weak to eschew their female dependency of affection and validation. So, purple pillars, who are really just advanced blue pillars, these males exist in the realm of not all women are like that, the realm of unicorns and they exist in this place as they come to terms with the cruel reality of female nature, which is, they do not care about males. Hey, I understand, I was there. It's a necessary step to liberation, which is my desire for all males. Liberation from devaluation and disposability. So here's the thing, females want your labor and money. Some may demand it at man-hating rallies. Others may push a vacuum and make a sandwich once in a while to get it. But make no mistake, if she is female, her priority is not male well-being. Even if she is aware of her manipulation of males, or her hypergamy, or of the underlying programming that drives her actions, still, on a subconscious, instinctual level, she seeks what all living females seek, survival. And that survival is balanced upon males' backs because males are taller and have bigger biceps. And, as we can blatantly see, they are easy to manipulate with a blushing of the cheek or a flick of the hips. So what, you may ask yourself, is my big plan? Well, you have to swallow reality of females and see that romantic love between the sexes is propaganda. It's fairy tale. It's a false yarn spun to keep males producing in order to maintain civilization. And my devious agenda? Well, it is simply this. Stop selling male-female interactions as love or romance or divine ordinance or soulmates. Educate males about female programming and the chemical highs of courtship. It is the intoxicating chemicals of lust and courtship that we maliciously label as love and romance and cosmic stars aligned soulmates. Quit with the fairy tales and educate males about the reality. Then let them make up their own minds about interactions with the apathetic black widows. Simply educate males about male-female interactions. How hard is that? Foreign females are the last chance saloon for advanced purple pillars whose unicorn dreams are in their final death throes. I feel your pain. I have been there. Then I had a turbocharged awakening and a simultaneous discovery of male empowerment and liberation. Suddenly everything clicked. Now I am a warrior assisting other males with picking the locks that keep the shackles affixed to their ankles. I do not dislike or hold ill will against females. They have the right to existence just as males, and they are absolutely justified in using any and all means at their disposal to affect survival and indeed flourish in this hostile existence. No, I am displeased at males falling for the illusions and falsehoods of romance and altruistic female benevolence that we males like to tell each other. I have no animosity towards females, nor their programming, any more than I hate sharks for existing. They merely are, and they do what they do. Simple as that. Educate males and work around these realities. I merely labor to inform males of feminine nature, not feminine fantasy. Nope. Sorry, no unicorns, only varying degrees of imposter mares with plastic horns duct taped to their foreheads. But hey, good luck with that, fellas. Good luck with that unicorn you found in Argentina, or Hong Kong, or Crimea. Black, white, red, Asian, Russian, tall, short, blonde hair, hazel eyes, Christian, country farm girl, educated, Comic-Con attendee. If she is female, then she comes fully equipped with female survival programming, which means gynocentrism and hypergamy. 
you will eventually learn that if she is a female who is talking about romance and love, she is an opportunistic vulture looking for roadkill. All the ifs, ands, or buts a person may retort with simply demonstrate a failure to grasp these truths. Yeah, but what do I know? Oh, you bet. Maybe there is a Russian, Asian, or Latino, or South American unicorn. Maybe you will hunt one down in an aboriginal tribe along the Nile. Or maybe there is a unicorn that works for merry maids. Maybe she goes to synagogue or she is LDS. Or maybe man-loving unicorns are still prone to classical music and waiting for you on MozartLovers.com. Maybe washed up porn stars or bank tellers or political rallies is where you will find that one true special exception. Good luck! Ask yourself one question. No matter where you find her or what her background, upbringing, or belief system or preferred brand of cat food is, no matter what she tells you, ask yourself this. Is she a human female? Then she likes you for your protection and provision, not for your personhood or your tender feelings or your dreams or your favorite color or for things that you used to do when you were a kid or for your ability to flare your nostrils or your ability to impersonate Arnold Schwarzenegger. Are you a human male? Is she a human female? Then you are a shovel to her, period. But hey, if you want to play the unicorn game and grasp at straws, knock yourself out. <laughs> what about V8 juice? What about ketchup? How about salsa? My friends, my brothers, stand with me, live free. Baby,